Hello and welcome back to Broadside Gaming with me Zug and Patch 14 is out. So let's have a look at what they've done. So it's a pretty beefy patch so far. I'm going to run down all of the uh, buffs, nerfs, everything like that. going to go through it and see what's going on. So we could not post all the patch notes here so make sure to head over to the forum check out part one so there's notes present here. Most important ones, if you will, part two, weapon balancing, part three, weapon balancing details continued. So it is a pretty beefy patch. So get yourselves a drink, strap in. Let's have a look, shall we? So opt, opt, yeah, Jesus, good start. Operative modifier, suppression boost, increase suppression from 5% to 25. Okay. It's a boost, so that's pretty good. All right, Psyker, let's have a look. This is the thing people have been a bit worried about, but we'll get to that. So, first of all, set uh, wield quell chain time to zero on all psycho blitzes, meaning it will be more fluid to start quelling after switching to your blitz. Good. Less laggy between uh, blitz abilities. Always good. Okay, uh, brain rupture. Let's look at the changes for this. Reduce the peril cost of charging right click from. 30% to 20%, nice little buff there. Uh, reduced the movement penalties, penalties from charging. Increased the power from 850 to 900. Okay, so Brain Rupture is getting a little damage boost. Not a massive, but you know, it's nice. Uh, increased Unyielding Armor Damage Modifier from 1 to 1.25. Increased Maniac Armor Damage Modifier from 1 to 1.5. Carapace Armor damage modifier from 0 0.75 to 1 fix an issue where brain burst brain rupture would cause an explosion even with the talented empowered psionics activated there <clears throat> so a sale this is going to be the thing people would be most worried about shifting power to reduce the spamminess of primary attack but increasing the usability of the secondary aimed attack okay reduced power of the primary action attack from 250 to 200 Mm. It is a nerf, but it is not a terrible, terrible nerf. But we'll have to do some playtesting to figure that one out. And increase the power of the secondary aimed action throw from 250 to 340. Ooh. Or 400 if talented empowered psionics is activated. Okay, so it's at 340 now or 400 if you take empowered psionics. That's pretty good. The secondary was a bit weird. Fixed an issue where a sales projectile would lose targeting when a force sword uh, when force swords were wielded. Sorry about that, just had to quickly change something there. And fixed an issue where a sail projectiles would lose targeting when a force sword when force swords are wielded. Okay. Fixed an issue that could cause the animation and action for a sail to be stuck if you were attacked while aiming a shard. Fixed an issue where a sail would play critical strike sounds globally and in 3D. There, so it seems a sail has been nerfed ever so slightly, but also buffed. I mean, it's not a terrible thing. They haven't just gone, no, and, you know, broken it. Smite. Uh, fixed an issue where the ability didn't show hit indicators when damaging enemies. Fixed an issue where incorrect uh, VFX cloud kept appearing during a secondary attack. So this is the most important thing, and I had made a video on this, but I didn't publish it because it was cheap. So this is the smite bug, and they've actually talked about this. So smite being able to be channeled without cost when empowered sonics was activated was a bug. We do, however, feel that without it, smite can feel a bit lackluster in combination with empowered sonics. So we are further increasing the power of it, and we'll be keeping an eye on it and are up for doing anything related to cost in the future as long as it's more balanced this time around. Okay, so they've taken feedback saying that Smite felt awful without the bug, and they've taken steps to make it better, but not quite as broken as it didn't cost anything ever. See, this is good. They're actually listening. So let's see what they've done. Increased bonuses, the bonus talent from Empowered Sonics, 125% uh, damage, 50% faster spread between enemies and fixed an issue where the talented 
Empowered Sonics incorrectly made Smite not cost any perils, so that was the bug, but they have increased the damage and the speed of it. Uh, combat ability, Psychonetics Wrath. Added a 10% quell to base to Psychonetics Wrath ability, meaning that Psychers who don't have the upgraded Psychonetics Wrath still can use the ability to avoid downing themselves. Okay. And Scry's Gaze. Fixed an issue where sound effects were not turned on and off properly when activating Scry's Gaze. Still a very, very underused ability. Uh, combat abilities. So the Telekinetic Shield and Shield Dome increased the speed of the Telekinetic Shield and Dome placement. Increased the max duration of the shield from 15 seconds to 17.5. Increased the max duration of the dome from 15 to 22.5. That's a big jump. Uh, increased the health of the Telekinetic Shield and Dome from 15 to 20. Increased the minimum duration of the Shield and Dome from 4 seconds to 6.5. Fixed an issue where with not being able to place the Shield on certain flat areas. That was quite annoying. Fixed an issue where the Warp Siphon Talent granted an instant cooldown of the Telekinetic Shield and Telekinetic Dome abilities. Yeah, that was a bit of a bug. Sad it's gone though, but you know, bug's a bug. Fixed an issue where enemies hits on the Telekinetic Shield and Dome abilities could be seen through enemies. Could be okay. That doesn't read right to me, but okay. Fixed an issue where impacts on the Telekinetic Field and Dome abilities were not vanishing. And they fixed an issue causing sound effects to not trigger correctly when entering exiting a Dome. The Talent Soul Stealer reduced toughness replenishment from 15 to 7.5. Oh, that's a big nerf. Uh, Perilous Combustion reduced the number of Soul Blaze stacks applied to nearby enemy elite specials from 4 to 3. Yeah, I thought that'd get done. Prescience. Uh, aura Talent Kinetic Presence reduced damage bonus from 10% to 5. Increased critical hit chance bonus from... Oh, what? Increased critical hit chance bonus to 5%. Oh, from 4%. Right. Makes sense. So the psych has been not nerfed, but pulled back in line slightly. Okay, the Zealot. Blaze of Faith. Tweaked knife throw to make it more consistent and easier hit and easier to hit priority targets. Added small cleave to be able to cleave through one small enemy. Reduced projectile radius from 0.37 to 0.2 to make it easier to hit priority targets in hordes and avoid accidentally hitting the smaller targets. Fair enough. I hate the knife anyway, so I don't really care, but... Uh, fixed, so Blades of Faith don't inherit spread modifiers from wielded ranged weapons. They should go straight now. Fair. Increased power from 500 to 585 to help reaching some weak spot breakpoints. Increased flak armor damage modifier from 0 0.75 to 0 0.8. Fixed minor animation issues. Combat ability, the Shroud Field. Talent Perfectionist reduced the backstab damage bonus from 100% to 50% but changed the cooldown increase from... But changed the cooldown increase from 100% to 50% so the cooldown punishment is lower. This was made to avoid single hit doing too much damage. Right. Changed the finesse damage bonus from being uh, multiplicative, multiplicative to additive. Demon hosts will now be able to see zealots using Shroud Field to avoid cases where players can aggro a demon host and make it attack other players. Yeah, I did see that a couple of times. It was very, very annoying. Uh, chorus of, the Sp of Spiritual Fortitude. Added functionality to cancel the ability with the secondary action input. Changed action chan uh, chaining so that you are not allowed to cancel out of the ability during wielding animation. This to avoid accidental cancelling of the ability before it has started. That is a good change. Change so that uh, monstrosities are now only staggered by the first and last pulse of the abilities. So no more pushing stuff off of edges, folks. You know, that's a bit annoying, but I didn't think it would last. Uh, Inoxable Judgment now only activates on melee and ranged hits. Second Wind added 0.5 seconds internal cooldown. Increased toughness replenishment from 10% to 15. That's a nice change. Shield of Contempt reduced damage reduction from 75% to 60%. Lame. The Talent Bleed for the Emperor reduced damage reduction from 50 to 40%.
These slight changes to damage reduction talents are to avoid high stacking damage reduction. Fixed the talent Martyr's Purpose having the wrong icon. Fixed an issue where Beacon of Purity Aura could leave players with remaining corruption damage. Fixed issues where the talent Sainted Gunslinger didn't activate when reloading combat shotguns or stub revolvers. So the Zealot's just been given a bit of a toughness nerf, to be honest. And the chorus of spiritual fortitude has been reeled in so it can't be used to push stuff off edges. And on to the veteran. We are currently working on an update to the veteran's talent tree, including keystones, which will be coming in a future patch. We hope that these changes to your abilities will be interesting enough and open up a few more build paths while we finalize the larger update. Okay, so they're not too happy with the veteran and they're trying to do more to it. Uh, reduced veteran stamina regeneration delay from 1.5 to 1, meaning all veterans will start stamina regeneration quicker than before. Okay. Smoke grenade added a small stagger to the smoke grenade explosion. Duration increased from 10 seconds base to 15 seconds with grenade tinkerer. From 10 seconds to 15 seconds, sorry. God, they, they've... The... the they haven't had someone proofread this, sorry. Let's go through that again. Duration increased from 10 seconds base, 15 seconds with a grenade tinkerer talent to 15 seconds base, 30 seconds with grenade tinkerer talent. They made it last longer, there you go. Fuck, because I got them stroke reading that. Blitz crack grenade. Change behavior of the talent twinned blast. One grenade will now land where aimed. The duplicate will grenade will land in a random position nearby left or right of the aimed position mm, that's a weird change Holy fire and executioner's stance right, sorry about that allow cooldown to tick during volley fire executioner's stance but increases the cooldown from 25 seconds to 35 seconds meaning achieving a higher uptime on volley fire will reward you more Talent Counterfire added Scab Stalkers as Volley Fire targets. Fixed issues where the Volley Adept Executioner Stance didn't activate when reloading combat shotguns or stub revolvers. Combat Ability Infiltrate. Demon Hosts can see you, and that's to stop people from trolling. Reduced Infiltrate cooldown from 60 seconds to 45, and increased the duration from 6 to 8 seconds. Combat ability, voice of command, reduced the cooldown from 45 seconds to 30 and added a stronger stagger to voice of command. And it will be able to st uh, stagger monstrosities and mutants. That's a really nice change. I run mostly voice of command. Uh, talent only in death does duty end. Increased, cool, uh, increased cooldown increased from 33% to 50. With the reduction cooldown of voice command, this adds up to the same 15 extra seconds cooldown. 33% of 45 is 15, 15 of 30 is 15. Okay. Talent, duty and honor. Increased toughness gained from 50 to 100 and duration from 10 to 15. Fix an issue where the ability didn't play the sounds correctly. Talent, dead shot. Moved from percentage, percentage of max stamina to flat stamina. 0.75 stamina per second to 0.25 per shot. Exploit weakness increased from 2.5% brittleness to 10% and set max stacks to 2. Okay. The description currently reads rending but should say brittleness. Oh, okay. Talent rending strikes reduced from 15 to 10% rending to all weapons. With the class overhaul, we also changed how rending was calculated, resulting in it being more effective than before. This resulted in rending strikes being stronger than we anticipated. So, yeah, rending's been nerfed on the uh, veteran. Talent keep their heads down. Increased range attack suppression from 25 to 50%. Talent demolition team corrected the description to state that only the veteran receives grenade. The gameplay change was already in, but the description didn't update properly. Okay. And now for the Ogryn. A big friendly rock. Reduced replenish cooldown from 60 seconds to 45. Increased maniac damage. Increased impact versus monstrosities. Stones thrown to the head of monstrosities will now stagger them. 
lowered chaining time from wield to the aim throw. This will reduce the time until the player can throw the stone, allowing for a more reactive gameplay. Okay, nice change. The Ogryn Frag Bomb. Armor modifiers. Close damage nerf bar. Unyielding 200%, 200%. Two. Near is now 325, and far is still 200. Armor modifiers. Uh, for Carapace. Was 75 to at near to 37.5 to far. Now it's been set to 100%. To near and three point and thirty seven point five at far, unyielding has been changed from one hundred eighty five percent to two hundred sixty two percent at far at uh, near sorry and at far one hundred to one hundred twelve point five. Uh, combat ability a loyal protector fixed an issue where demon hosts were behaving weirdly after an ogryn with loyal protector activated it. Fix an issue where the ability didn't play sounds effects for the other players. Point blank barrage. Fixed issues where the ability would not trigger. A talent reload and ready. Talent light them up. Reduced stacks of burn from 3 to 2. Lame. And talent batter. Reduced number of bleed stacks applied from heavy attacks from 6 to 4. Super lame. Talent Pained Outburst, fixed an issue where the talent would return 100% toughness instead of the 25 toughness and would replenish toughness if knocked down. Fair enough, that was broken. Talent Dominate, reduced from 30% to 15% rending on elite kills. Yeah, they really didn't like us playing a rending, did they? Looks like I'm going to have to find a few more builds. Uh, enemies. They've just, they've tweaked some enemy health to be lower, higher, lower, higher. It's not particularly interesting. I'm not gonna go through every single number. I will link the uh, patch notes so you can read for yourself if you want to. Uh, spawning fixed an issue that caused more flames to be able to be spawned at the same time than intended. Added more aggressive, aggressive speed running uh, prevention spawning. So if you're, so I thought this was going on. They had added speed running prevention so that people can't just run through the map so now if you do try to speed run and somebody gets too far ahead they're going to punish you and trigger more and more and more fix an issue where monster special conditions could fail to set a weakened states uh, improved dodging when mutants charge at you around corners added extra wall collision ray cast plague ogrins lowered the plague ogrins stomp radius yeah, that's about it Reduce bleed damage from two. As uh, this is the weapon changes. Sorry, reduce bleed damage from two hundred to one point uh, to one hundred seventy-five. Note this was forty before patch thirteen, so overall bleed is still incredibly good. Uh, increased sprint acceleration for ranged assault sprint weapons, e.g., in for the auto guns, recon last guns. Fixed so recoil doesn't increase while crouching for some weapons. Rending no longer increases st stagger strength. Dueling swords. Changed when a changed chain window on all swords to have faster access to weapon and special attack. Adjusted the cleave values, but they don't say to what. Slightly increased power on all stab heavy attacks. Improved armor damage modifiers versus unyielding and flak on heavy stabs. Changed chain window on all swords to have faster access to weapon specials. Heavy swords. Set damage profile from first and second target. Chain axes, increased maniac armor damage modifier. The kickback, faster auto reload after shooting from the hip. Increased power, a bit tighter spread with ADS and aim down sights. Minimum pellet hit count changed from 10 to 16 for both hip fired aim down sights and all armor types except flak and unyielding. Grenade Gordon tweaked values on melee attack to make it more viable. Fixed an issue where heavy melee attacks did not allow for talents such as batter to proc as intended. The Ripper Gun. Reduced base reload speed from 30% to 20%. Slightly reduced ammo reserve. The Ripper Gun has been nerfed. Force Swords. Fixed an issue where the smart targeting of the Force Sword push allowed up a uh, push followed up by being overly prioritized. Increased light attacks and heavy attack damage with a bit Increased cleave and finesse, changed force sword dodge limit, 
from infinite to five, same as the combat knife. We believe infinite dodges aren't healthy for the balance of the game and decided instead to give four swords the same dodge count as the combat knife, one of the best dodging weapons. This change was made together with an overall bump in the four swords damage and cleave output to compensate for the dodge loss and other weapons power increase. <coughs> Not a bad change. The infantry last gun improved sprint ready uptime for all last guns, improved hip fire recoil spread for all last guns, increased their power. The last pistol uh, increased its power, reduced the sprint ready uptime, slightly increased the fire rate, tweaked recoil spread stability to be far less severe, focused on stability even when mobile, tweaked the input buffer so as to reduce the feeling of lost inputs. Thunderhammers added one more dodge, switched Crucius Mark II Thunderhammers push follow up to be a light sweep, switched the Iron Helm activated strike down heavy sweeping profile to a heavy single target profile, meaning it will be more effective against single targets. Switch the iron helm chain from push follow to heavy three for easier access. Uh, I think these changes are actually going to be very good for the thunder hammer. Crusher. Crusher has been changed to be more of a fast crowd controlling headshot of focused weapon, added one more dodge, turned light heavy damage profile to be more effective. We have a focus on headshotting, increased heavy hitbox length from 1.15 to 1.4. Tuned up the attack speed, reduced push follow up to light sweeping with higher finesse, reduced light and heavy activated explosion radius, larger decrease on light attacks. Tactical actors, the, the Atox Mark II, tuned up single target damage for light one and three. The Ogryn Clubs, increased the speed of heavy attacks on the Brunt's Basher, Mark 3B and the Billy Club and Slap. Tuned down impact a bit to avoid juggling enemies in the air, fixed so slapping weak spot can stagger stronger enemies such as crushers. So we can now pimp slap crushers. There. Uh, combat swords added chain to heavy attack one from push follow up and slightly increased the chain time. Devil's Claw Mark 7 push follow-up switched to single target damage profile following attack change to a sweeping profile, meaning the first attack will be more useful versus one target and the follow attack will be more useful with multiple targets. I like that they're doing this. It means they're actually looking at weapons that have weird attack patterns and that people won't use and all they need is a slight change and it makes them incredibly usable. And let's look at the Headhunter Auto Guns. Bash Weapon Special. Tweaked hitbox to be a bit easier to hit. Increased speed for normal heavy bash. Added chain window for hip. Shoot to shooting won't lock you out from firings as much. The Vrax Mark III Headhunter Auto Gun. Tweaked recoil behavior. The Vrax Mark VII Headhunter Auto Gun. Tweaked the recoil, increased damage per shot, and decreased the fire rate. The, sorry, <coughs> the Agrippina Mark Eight Headhunter Auto Gun changed burst time behavior from 0 0.175 to 0 0.1. Braced Auto Guns. All Braced Auto Guns replaced push on weapon special to sweep, added stagger reduction to bash hit, high on weak spot hit, tweaked hitboxes to be a bit easier to hit, increases the speed of normal heavy bash. So, next up is the four stars. Tweaked fire times on the four stars with a projectile primary attack. The surge four staff, equinox mark three, trauma four staff, and equinox mark four, void strike staff. Fire time is now one, 0 0.1 seconds up from 0, 0 0.25 seconds, and the animation time scales have been tweaked to better match the fire time. They've changed the special attack bash that nobody cares about. All right, the actual Void Strike changes. Chain time from start, next projectile, set to quell change time. I don't understand what they Chain timing from start, next projectile, set to quell chain time. 
slightly reduce the previous 70% buff applied to the secondary fire to tune down extreme damage on high health targets. Surge Staff added Gibbing to Surge Staff kills. The Rumbler reduced sway to make aiming trajectory more reliable, added crosshair during a reload. Human shotguns upped the ammo pool, increased armor damage modifiers versus unarmored, infested, maniac, and unyielding. M35 uh, Magna Core plasma gun increased power, cleave, and finesse. Good because it was terrible. Grenades changed aiming of grenades to update aiming trajectory up to the point of throwing the projectile. Right, and now into the blessing changes. Fire Frenzy changed from attack speed to close damage. Close damage, it goes... I'm just going to do these in their rank from 1 to 4. 7%, 8%, 9%, and 10%, stacking 5 times. Stripped Down has been fully reworked into a solely ranged attack immunity blessing, thus the sprint speed bonus has been removed. You want to keep movement speed bonuses in the talent tree layer instead. Good, because sprint uh, strip down was terrible. Speed load. Changed from triggering on melee kill to close kill. Good. Added stacking of the bonus up to five stacks. The reload speed has been nerfed from 14, 16, 18, 20 to 7, 8, 9, 10. Limb Spitter. Limb Spitter. Cooldown has been changed from 5 seconds across the board to 5, 4.5, 4, and then 3.5. Ruthless Backstabber. Rending bonus has been changed from 35, 40, 45, 50 to 90, 100, 110, and 120. Infernus. Burning maximum stacks for the Recon Last Gun has been changed from 8 and 10 to 10 and 12. Can Opener Britain, the stacks have been changed from 5, 6, 7, 8 to 10, 12, 14, 16. And then there is a big pile of bug fixes, which I will let you... Uh, yeah, Jesus, I've got mush mouth. Peruse at your leisure. Uh, let's see if there is anything interesting on that. And there's not. So, there you go, folks. Patch 14 for you. And a look at my incredibly boring browser. Uh, if you have enjoyed the, the video, please like, subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications. It really does help us out got any questions about the patch changes please feel free to ask i'm going to be working on changing a few of the builds because of the changes so hopefully you'll be able to see those all soon so thank you very much for watching and we shall see you all again next time so until then take it easy and i'll catch you later